CEO. We're a premier and specialty elite IBM business partner. That's the highest level of business partner achievement. We have a demonstration center on the West Coast in both Woodland Hills, our corporate office, and in Irvine. We have 55 employees throughout California, Arizona, and surrounding states. And again, we're headquartered in Woodland Hills with physical offices in Sausalito, Irvine, and Phoenix. Next slide, please, Rhonda. Our mission statement is to become the leading provider of information technology solutions in the Western United States and find growth through excellent client service, strong technical experience, and devotion to personal success. And I can tell you that that is a commitment from our CEO on down. We look at processes and business decisions through the eyes of our clients and ensure that we provide you with the best customer experience we can. Next slide, please. Why partner with Key? Well, we're an extension of our manufacturer's teams, whether that's IBM, NetApp, Cisco, Brocade, or VMware, or any other teams that we work with. We provide excellent attention to detail. We have successful, excellent resources for implementations, effective and timely problem resolution, and personal attention to our clients and to their satisfaction. Next slide, please. What we do from a pre-sales customer approach. We discover and analyze to get a clear understanding of your business objectives. We design networks, systems, storage, virtualization, management, and protection infrastructures and processes, and have access to labs and proof of concept testing. We implement, as a partner, we work with you on schedules to prepare and deploy solutions. We manage through providing retainer services, monitoring services, and we support you by providing and engaging with our manufacturers on maintenance services. Next slide, please. The last slide that I have shows solutions that we build. And in closing, I would just like to say that Key Info offers solutions to a wide range of industries. Our clients represent almost all industries and vary in size from small businesses to billion dollar corporations. And we look for an opportunity to serve you and to earn your business. Thank you, Rhonda. I will turn it back over to you. OK, and then I'm going to now turn the presentation over to Charlie. Go. Hello, everybody. My name is Charlie Schick. Um, I'm uh, the IBM Big Data Healthcare and Life Sciences rep. Uh, rep. I work on the sales team uh, representing IBM's big data products for healthcare and life sciences companies. And um, what I'd like to do today is just tell you a bit about our newest version of our Nintesa Data Warehouse appliance, which we just launched in the last few weeks. And uh, it now powers our new line of pure data for analytics which is what I'll be talking about today. And I'll tell you a bit more about this product family and specifically about pure data for analytics and a few examples of how it's being used in healthcare and life sciences. So um, in, back in April, IBM announced a new family of what we call expert integrated systems. And these are systems uh, with integrated expertise and built for the cloud, and they combine the flexibility of a general purpose system uh, and the elasticity of the cloud and the simplicity of an appliance. And uh, these expert integrated systems uh, will fundamentally change both the experience and the economics of IT. And what these are, these are stacks of self-tuned components um, that come together and um, together will have uh, make it easier for people to um, build these systems, deploy these systems. Uh, and, and the way we view this, this is very much like uh, what Nikiza brought to the table, coming back to other systems. And we have uh, three systems in this uh, right now in the pure systems area. And it's a family of products. So the first one that we came out with, we started
started with the PureFlex system, which was for building out application or infrastructure environments on scalable, highly available, and easy to maintain environments. And then we came out next with the Pure Application system, which takes these same principles, but now allows you to integrate all the software and tools you need to build a highly scalable application platform. What we've done recently is now we've introduced our Pure Data system that delivers data services to your applications, regardless of whether they be transactional applications, like point of sale or a CRM system, or analytic systems like customer churn, campaign management, business optimization. And um, in the Pure Data system, uh, so these are specifically designed from the ground up to deliver optimal performance for certain workloads. It could be a transactional workload or an analytic workload. And they're ready for you to load your data on within hours of delivery to the data center. And they have a completely integrated management system and a single point of support. So unlike a traditional system that you would build for yourself with off-the-shelf components or best-of-breed components, uh, where you have to call each vendor separately for support, depending on which component has the problem, with a pure system, uh, you call one place, tell them that you're running pure data system for analytics, and you get support across the entire system in one place. And so this is really changing the way people interact with um, their systems. And as I was saying, the pure system is designed for uh, optimal performance for designated workloads. And so they come in three flavors. We have the pure data systems for transactions, and we have pure data uh, system for operational analytics, and the one I'm going to talk to you about today is the pure data system for analytics, which is powered by Mintiza technology. So uh, let's talk about leveraging the, the pure data system for analytics. So the first question is why analytics, right? So today, most business most businesses don't really know what predictive modeling, forecasting, or designing experiments and mathematical op optimization might do for them. But over the next 10 years, these powerful techniques will have to become mainstream. And if, uh, especially in healthcare, where the future of healthcare is data-driven, if you're not understanding the data, you're going to be left behind. And so it's very important. And, and one thing, we did a survey. So these are this is uh, data from a survey, a bunch of surveys we did. And what uh, what's really interesting from this uh, survey was that top performing organizations use analytics five times more than lower performers. So overall our study found the widespread belief that analytics offers value. And half our respondents said that improvement of information and analytics was a top priority in their organization. And more than one in five said that they were under intense or significant pressure to adopt this advanced information and analytic approaches. And, um, and because of these, there was a 57% increase in the respondents who stated that they believe that analytics creates a competitive advantage for them. So this, if, if this doesn't make you realize the power of analytics and what it's going to do to our organization, um, I don't know what will. But it's very important. And, and so this is why we have uh, so much effort in, in the pure data system for analytics. Now, um, Smart analytics is not just constraints to operational reports, right? In today's world, uh, you need more than just reports. Uh, you need to combine your organizational data with, for example, EMR data or other financial data uh, and bring it together with sophisticated predictive models that will um, uh, help optimize uh, outcomes and reduce admissions. Um, in addition, uh, most of today's data is unstructured or, or semi-structured, right? It can come uh, from documents and forms like doctor's notes, devices and monitors throughout a hospital, inventory and supply chain. And the web is producing much more data than any other source. So in order to outperform your competitors, you need to be able to take all this data and use analytics in combination with your organizational data to make better decisions. Uh, and so today's analytic systems need to be at, able to access and analyze the data where it exists in its native form. You not you shouldn't have to scrape it, summarize it, and then load it into a reporting system before running your predictive model or statistical analysis. Uh, yet most organizations still struggle to keep up with the demand uh, in the analytics from this flood of data. So uh, this brings us to the, the data challenges uh, in that we call this big data, right? That, that there's large volumes, velocities, and variety of data. 
data that we're all dealing with. And so there's a growing use of solutions and technologies um, such as mobile, social, analytics, and cloud that are driving the growth of this data and data processing workloads on computing systems. And while many smaller data workloads can be consolidated along with applications onto a single system, consolidated big data workloads typically require systems that are specifically designed and optimized for them. And so when, when organizations custom integrate, configure, and tune their own systems, it takes a lot of time and effort. And so uh, what we've done is, is, is create a system that brings it all together in one place and makes it much easier, reducing the complexity, accelerating the time to value, and improving the economics. And so what we have is uh, our peer, what I'm showing here today is uh, peer systems. And, and specifically, peer systems can be summarized in terms of speed, simplicity, scalability, and smart. And this is the heritage of Nichiza now taken to a broader portfolio. In particular, Pure Data for Analytics is the newest of Nichiza's data warehouse appliance. And like the Nichiza that came before it, it's a purpose-built appliance, an integration of the database server and storage. Um, and I'll show you some of the standard interface, uh, standard tools that can be used with it. Uh, it's usually 10 to 100 times faster than a traditional system uh, when we talk to our customers. Uh, you don't need uh, a, a fleet of DBAs to, to manage it and huge IT teams. We have a lot of people who deal with very minimal administration and tuning or indexing. Um, and this, this system can scale to the petabyte. Uh, you just add on to it uh, simply. And of course, it's got high performance advanced analytics embedded already into the data warehouse. That can be 100, maybe even 1,000 times faster than what people normally could do their analytics. Now, to, to just give this idea of what happens when you integrate a whole system and it becomes like an appliance? What do we mean by um, an appliance? What we mean is it's a dedicated device that does one thing and does it extremely well. And uh, in this case, an example could be uh, a toaster or uh, uh, a stove, something that you uh, does one thing, easy to install, very easy to operate, very simple interface. My favorite is actually talking about an iPod which integrates storage and operating system and data management that allows you to use your music really easily. Um, it's also a prettier example than a, than a dishwasher. Um, but um, that's a great example of how you just load what you need to do. You don't have to concern yourself about what the machine is doing. You just use it. And so what we've done is, in the Pure Data System for Analytics, uh, it, it's integrating the server, the storage, the database, and the analytics all into a, a one package. And um, it's a massively parallel system with hardware acceleration that provides high performance analytics without you having to move that data in normal data warehouses. And it's a true analytic appliance. It's easy to install, operate, manage, support, and low cost when you compare it to alternative approaches. And what's um, some of the things that I'm going to say here, some people don't believe us when we tell it, but uh, because of the acceleration and the power of the technology, you don't have to do things like indexes or tune it every time you have to do a query. Uh, it's data model agnostic. It's uh, very parallelized uh, and very easy to upgrade, uh, very easy to maintain. And there's a lot of tools in there to make your software, uh, your queries run faster right out of the box. And uh, most people, when we give them the box, they're up and running within hours. They're loading their data, doing the queries within a day. Uh, and there's minimal ongoing uh, maintenance there. And the, the staff level you need to manage this is tremendously reduced. And I'll have an example later on about that. And the key thing is that uh, um, it easily uh, connects to the rest of the components of our big data platform, which I'll describe in a bit. So another thing is uh, what I'm trying to show here is that uh, getting data in and getting data out of the, of the appliance of the pure data system uh, is very easy. It has standard interface with SQL, ODBC, JDBC, OLADB, uh, and you can use that, the software on the left. As you can see, some IBM software, but also some other software such as um, Business Objects, uh, Informatica, um, and Ab Initio to load your data in. So as long as they're using the standard uh, interfaces. 
uh, for doing the reading of the data at the end, um, you can use things like Cognos and SPSS, but also if it can use the same standard interface, you can use things from MicroStrategy, once again, business objects, and SAS, which uh, we have a lot of people in the healthcare space using SAS. And in terms of all our built-in features for analytics, we have a wide range of analytic capabilities. Um, and there's three main pillars to this. It's our SDK, which allows you to extend the system uh, to any number of supported languages. And some organizations, such as SAS and Fuzzy Logic and IBM, have been adding to these analytical libraries. Also, um, we have uh, IBM tools for this and also many third-party tools. And you can see on the edges what are the kind of tools. So really, no matter what function you call or write, it will run in parallel within the database and all your data. So you can take full advantage of the platform. And we have many examples of people using SAS and Fuzzy Logic and SPSS um, and um, getting tremendous speed increase and, and uh, ability to do analytics that they couldn't do before. And what that means is if you think of um, you know, going from left to right here, how organizations are in their maturity of uh, understanding analytics, uh, usually people are trying to just get to the point of being doing their regular reporting. Well, you know, what's happened? What do we have today? Looking back. And um, so there's a lot of struggle just to get to that point. But once you get that, to that point, and you start using a tool like your data uh, for analytics, is you start doing predictive analytics, where you can start anticipating what's going on in your business process and, and being able to understand what will happen or, or if you make a change, what might that effect be based on all the data that you have. And the, the more you can do that and the better uh, your analytics platform is, you can start understanding, uh, optimizing your business and understanding what's the best choice for your business. And that's um, that's going to be a strong competitive advantage uh, for a business who can do that. And, and one other thing that I, I must say, I should point out that Pure Data for Analytics forms part of our big data platform, uh, integrating well with all the components of the stack that make up uh, a robust big data solution that allows you to look at all sorts of data types and manage and govern your data. Now, an example, here's some examples that I have um, of of what some customers use pure data uh, for analytics, what do they get? Uh, thousands of times faster um, uh, speed, uh, or they are up and running much faster before they even have training um, done, um, or a very rapid RI uh, on some systems. Actually, we had one customer who got their RI during the testing phase. Um, they were able to do their analytics and save millions of dollars already in the few weeks that they had the product for testing. Um, very scalable where uh, large organizations are, might be putting petabytes of data, uh, years of historical data, and managing all that data. And, and finally, um, uh, a strong computing environment where you can accelerate something that might take days um, to, to bring it down to hours, or something that might take uh, hours bring it down to, to a few minutes. And so these are examples of the speed, simplicity, and scalable, and what smarts mean uh, for our appliances. So I wanted to get in a little more detail now on uh, how Pure Data System for Analytics is being used in healthcare life sciences. And what I'll do is um, I'll have a use case and an example, and then show you how people would use it, and then what that system might look like. All right? So. Uh, so pure data, when, when we look at what's happening in the healthcare industry, we see uh, certain areas where pure data can help, right? So for example, improving in, in the clinic or uh, making better outcomes or increasing access to healthcare. And um, we have many customers uh, in the space who are using uh, our, our pure data for analytics, um, ranging from pharmaceutical companies like AstraZeneca to um, hospitals like Marshfield and uh, Fletcher Allen, to data providers such as Premier and Walter Spluer, um, and payers such as Blue Cross Blue Shield. And so in the next example, you'll, you'll see different areas that give you an idea of how people are using analytics in their organization and what they've been able to achieve. 
So the first use case is about um, uh, health outcomes and analytics uh, around drug safety and e efficacy and the ability to do computationally intense analysis uh, to really understand uh, what are the, the factors involved in uh, drug safety or um, other types of drugs. So, so health outcome analytics, uh, this example is coming from our uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital, which is a member of the Harvard Medical School. And uh, the challenge here is that you have a large volume of data, and the, and the analytics is really complex trying to understand why a drug is effective or not. And uh, IBM uh, Pure Data for Analytics is the right solution for this use case because its ability, it has an ability to consume large amounts of data and do very fast analysis. And, to, and there's little need for administration maintenance, which is a huge selling point for this crowd because they don't want to spend their time dealing with um, dealing with the machines when they just want to do their analysis. And uh, and the other thing is, like pharmaceutical companies and it, uh, the FDA and others are really interested in understanding the efficacy of drugs, and they can benefit from a solution like this. And they can study the use of medications in very large and very targeted populations to understand the use and effectiveness and detect early warning signs of adverse events, uh, identify more cost-effective drugs, um, and maybe even negotiate a higher market price based on market-based evidence. And one area that we call this, this is real-world evidence, taking real-world post-market uh, launch data and being able to understand what the drug is doing out in the market. Um, and. Um, and so an example of, of what Harvard did, um, so what this group is, is one of the preeminent uh, pharmacoepidemiology groups in, in the country. And uh, they study, um, they're the ones who are actually creating a lot of methods that people use to study drug safety and effectiveness. And one of their challenges was they have huge data stores, uh, and they're trying to do these really complex analytics on large amounts of data. And Lots of times what they would have to do is take a subset of that data and try to analyze just a subset and hope that when they analyze the whole data, they didn't have some skew in that data. Also, um, when they are trying to do their, uh, their models, they sometimes take a long time and they want to iterate those models. So the problem with a slow system is that they couldn't iterate fast enough. And uh, usually in this space, in pharmacoepidemiology, the, the story goes that you actually do your analysis starting Friday night, hoping that it doesn't crash by Monday morning and that it actually completes by Monday morning. And so what this team did, they came and, and got the secure data um, for analytics and uh, built the whole program around it, around high-dimensional pharmacoepidemiology. And they can now run their algorithms much faster, 10 to, uh, 20 to 30 times faster than in their previous um, system. Uh, they can now do these uh, analyses much more rapidly and much more often, and so therefore can iterate their methods much more quickly. And one of the key things here is that they have no IT support, no IT budget to run this machine, and they're doing it all themselves. Uh, and lastly, um, the tools that they're using, they started using SAS and getting a tremendous acceleration of SAS, but now they're moving towards R uh, because R parallelizes really well within uh, the secure data system. And this gives you an idea of what this slide shows is the stakeholders that are involved uh, in someone who's, who wants to know about health outcomes analytics. And uh, at the bottom, what we have are, is the data on the left and as the data gets viewed through the system on the bottom. And then on the top, we have the different people uh, who are involved in understanding outcomes of drugs. So for example, the, the patient might be looking for effective treatments, uh, effective drugs, whereas uh, a marketing uh, team might be trying to understand pricing strategies. And we actually have a, a great example of that where uh, one organization had a drug that fights a very common infection, a hospital-based infection, that uh, the drug is actually much more expensive than the drugs that they currently use. But it just so happens that the drugs that they currently use have a 20 to 30 percent uh, readmission rate. And so really the total cost of care for that infection uh, can be really high. And so what this uh, pharmaceutical company is doing is trying to justify their pricing based on what they see in the real world 
uh, of readmission, saying, hey, even though our drug's more expensive at the beginning, we can prove that our outcomes are better than the current drug, and therefore, overall, the cost of care is less. And this is going to be really important now that there's been a strong drive to reduce readmissions. There's a, um, hospitals will not get paid if readmission, if someone gets readmitted for the same cause um, uh, within a certain period of time. So there's been a lot of effort in understanding outcomes within um, not just pharma, but also in the hospital. And what, what kind of system would that look like? So these are the functional components. So you can see on the left, data coming in to um, a lot of this data is structured. Uh, it comes in to the pure data system for analytics. And then you can have your analytic apps on top of that to understand um, uh, what's going on with that data. So it could be looking at the drug effectiveness or looking at uh, what are the outcomes from the treatments of the drugs. And the key difference here that IBM has is that we provide light and fast analytics on very large sets of data uh, and data that is being uh, intensely analyzed in very computationally complex uh, situations. And it allows you to integrate all these systems uh, with minimal maintenance. Another use case I'd like to go over is, uh, is what we call insight-driven marketing. And this is an example of um, leveraging um, the pure data system for analytics with some other tools to provide a, uh, a much better understanding of what's happening with the customers. And this is based on some work from Blue Cross Blue Shield in Massachusetts. Uh, and health plans are under pressure to reduce costs and increase their member base. And, and the way they're trying to do that is engaging more with their members, pushing more of the health decisions to their members, but informing the members at the same time. And so one way they're doing this is creating a targeted understanding of the customer segment and developing customized communication and programs to drive behavior and create a more personalized experience. And uh, so IBM Pure Data for Analytics can be the foundation for these initiatives for insight-driven marketing. And this solution, based on its use of technology, takes broad sets of data from multiple sources and enables complex analytics on large volumes of data. So for example, a CMO in a health plan can develop a member-level health information in order to create targeted programs to drive a certain behavior. And so for a CMO to do this, they need to look at the subpopulations of the member base, analyze, uh, analyze based on the disease code, treatment, outcomes, and then determine uh, what best uh, provider can provide the best outcome for the best cost. And this is what uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield is doing, um, where um, they deployed IBM Pure Data for Analytics with Cognos and WebSphere as their portal, uh, and uh, they have seven years, rolling seven years of data on their members, having all the accounts, providers, claims, billing, lab results, uh, and all the communication has been done there. And, they, and already at the beginning, they were saved a million dollars in the first year of use. Uh, and it boosted the number of customers that are seeking treatment uh, by, by half. And, um, and it's been very well received. And the, the, or the leaders of Blue Cross Blue Shield Massachusetts are, are seeing this as a, a template of uh, effective use of the technology to engage in the customer. And another example of how uh, a payer might use this tool is, uh, let's say they are watching um, a customer going through the process of orthopedics, and they see that they can predict up to a certain percentage that the person will start requesting an MRI based on how many visits to the doctor, how many x-rays they've been taking, how, what's their complication. And so when that time comes, they can be ready to provide the member with the right choices, the right based on the member preferences, member location, outcomes of the provider, uh, and the cost of the provider. And that way, working together and understanding the data, they can lower the total overall cost of the care. And once again, here's some of the stakeholders for the insight-driven marketing use case uh, for a pair. And once again, looking at the bottom left, you can see the kind of data that comes through. Uh, and as it goes through, who's uh, analyzing that data along the way for either geospatial analysis or, or, or the marketer targeting uh, offers uh, via the preferred contact method. And then, of course, um, 
the, the top level people try to make sure that there's increased profitability and market share. And, and so this is, once again, it's, it can be patient-centric where you're providing that data to the patient through a portal, but at the same time it's important for uh, the marketing teams to be able to in, uh, engage with the customer um, so that um, they're both involved, the customer's more involved in their own health care and we can reduce those costs. And um, this is an example of the kind of the components you need. So uh, on the left, on the upper left, are more of the structured components that would be feeding into the pure data system for analytics. But keep in mind that this is a multi-component thing. So you might have a member portal that might be running on pure application, uh, the, the pure system for application. Uh, and then also you might have on the bottom left the unstructured information that that needs to get ingested into the system and analyzed by something like our uh, infrastructure, Big Insights, which would be analyzing the, the member activity that's happening in the unstructured data and then feeding that information back into the pure data system for analytics so that you can use uh, things like Cognos, SPSS, and Unica uh, to analyze the patient, uh, populate, uh, analyze the member population, uh, analyze the campaigns that are going on, and being able to provide uh, the, the ultimate engagement. And so uh, what this, these functional components are showing is not just what the pure data system for analytics can do, but how it stands within a whole uh, ecosystem of tools to be able to drive this kind of use case insight-driven marketing. Uh, the third and, and final use case I wanted to talk about is about just basic enterprise health analytics. So how does uh, having a tool like IBM Pure Data for Analytics uh, allow a hospital to um, get better clinical decisions, uh, to be able to understand the operations uh, that are happening, understanding your admission factors, uh, and also keeping track of all the data around the patient. And so the example that we have is uh, from a large regional hospital that was uh, that used at, at the core of its uh, system is an Ichiza, um, is a IBM uh, pure data for analytics system with millions of patient records, years of lab and radiology results, millions of diagnoses, and um, this organization, what they're doing is they're loading their EMR data onto Nijiza so that they can do their this deep analytics. And they're using SAS to do this. Um, they're, um, and, and they have uh, SAS uh, connects really well to Nijiza, just like SPSS does. And they've been able to, um, when they installed it, they were up and running less than a day. Their system, when they were doing the initial test, were about 45 to 100 times faster in the analysis than the existing Oracle system that they have. And this system uh, is supporting um, terabytes and terabytes of data and is being accessed by um, hundreds and um, thousands of users across many locations. And, and the goal here for them is to really understand what's the clinical, financial, and operational uh, status of the organization and pushing that decision making down towards the patient so that the the clinicians and the people in the clinics have a better view of what's going on. And, um, and so this is showing here, uh, once again, the stakeholders that would be involved. And you have the part where um, on the bottom, once again, is the data and the kind of uh, reports and analytics that you'd be performing on that data. And then on the top, the different stakeholders that would be asking specific questions. And one of the key things is, is not just the patient trying to get better and trying to understand what their data is, but really is in the physician and the clinical analytics people who are trying to improve patient outcomes and trying to understand um, their clinical effectiveness and being able to make those comparisons and, uh, across their population um, to reduce readmissions to uh, improve care, improve health, and reduce costs. And what that system would look like, uh, on the bottom left, we have um, things like uh, the, the pharmacy plans and the, the provider information, the financial information being fed into the database on the pure data system for analytics. Um, but in a hospital, there's other, there might be either data in motion or data at rest that is unstructured, uh, such as web information or images or emails or device information that has valuable uh, information that gives you a three, that when you combine that, so you would process that through something like infrastructure streams or 
InfraSphere Big Insights, which are really good at looking at large variety types of data and lots of data that's in motion, and feed that understanding into the pure, uh, pure data system for analytics, which would already have that structured information. That gives you a 360 view of the patient, and then you can do much better analysis on that. And, and that's a key thing here, that, that it's not just the fact that um, it's, a, it's a database on a machine uh, that's all integrated, but that it can deal with large amounts of data to allow you to look at all your data at once, because not all your data is in one system. Um, you need to pull multiple sources of data together to get a better view of the patient to provide the better care. And so, in summary, uh, I would say that we have three models of a pure data system, uh, one for transactions, one for operational analytics, uh, and one for um, uh, analytics that are um, tuned for this specific data workload. Um, the pure data system for transactions is for running highly reliable and scalable transactional databases. The pure data system for operational analytics is an operational warehouse that balances demand in delivering analytics to real-time decision making in business operations. Uh, it can handle continuous loading of data, complex data analysis, and concurrent operational queries. But in particular, what we've been talking about today is about pure data systems for analytics, which is powered by Natisa technology and is the data warehouse system for high-performance analytics and reporting a large volume of data. Uh, and this is the, the enhanced update to the Natisa appliance. And because the Natisa technology is built specifically for analytics, it greatly simplifies both data and system management. Now, um, for the next steps for you, thinking is, um, you know, how might this relate to your key business initiatives? You know, how are you managing your IT resources today to support clinical and business objectives? And the question is that we always start with is, what are the critical applications driving your organization, and how can something like pure data systems analytics increase the efficiency uh, and the ability to deal with the workload? So these are just some questions. Um, one thing I want to talk about is that uh, we can do technology demonstrations, live or remote. Uh, we have something called the Pure Experience Program, uh, where basically it's a, a proof of concept where one way is we can roll in a machine into your data center and you use your data. Uh, we, we set it up for you within a day, and then we walk away and let you deal with it with your data and uh, your queries, and we help you understand how it works with your stuff. So we're not taking your data and your queries and going off to a lab and giving you the ideal environment. We're giving you the environment that we think you will be using in production. And you can use it over the course of a month, and we will work together with you to understand uh, what were the benefits of what you did and evaluating it. Um, and so you can look up more about that at uh, ibm.com slash pure experience. And finally, if you um, want to discover more about uh, Pure Systems, we have a website, ibm.com slash Pure Systems. Uh, developers can go and check out our stuff. Um, and of course, you can take a test drive. So uh, thank you very much. And um, I hope this was informative. And uh, if there are any questions, please let me know. Okay, great. So we are going to now enter the Q&A section of our webinar. And again, I, here are the instructions on your screen. Uh, but again, if you want to submit a question, if you can uh, type question in the question section of the webinar control panel in the upper right of your screen. And if you don't see that control panel, click on the small orange box containing the white arrow in the upper right of your screen, and you'll see a place where you can type the question. So um, I'm also going to turn things over to Pete Elliott, and he will go ahead and, and moderate the questions. Uh, Pete, I think we have some questions that have already come in. Yes, we do. OK, so I've got uh, the first question up at the bat for Charlie is, do you have provider data models? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so what, uh, what usually happens is, um, when we go into um, an organization, uh, usually their data is all over the place and uh, what I call plural data. And so they always ask us for integration tools for that. And then they say, OK, I'm going to load that into my data warehouse. And then when they get the data warehouse, they're like, oh, i got to build data models. And 
data models can take a long time to build and they're a pain in the neck. And what we have, we have a health care provider data uh, model, and we also have a health plan data model. And what these are, they are tools to help have the discussion between the business people and the people who are deploying the data model. And um, this tool greatly accelerates the deployment of the data model. And we, we have it in many places. Uh, this, these were data models that were built um, in conjunction with Premier, and now we're adding to it. Um, so there's a lot of people using it, and, and, and if people don't know, Premier is the large alliance of, of 2,500 hospitals and about 80,000 clinics, and they're using these data models as the core of their system for providing data to all the member um, hospitals and clinics, and it's all running on pure data uh, for analytics. And uh, so yes, we do have data models, and it's something that can really help uh, deploy. And these data models are uh, very well designed for pure data uh, for analytics. So just we're clear, Charlie, is that you have basically templates, data models that generically can be used by any healthcare organization, and yet modified according to whatever uh, the specific business model is at that healthcare entity. Yes, and, and, and to be fair, these data models are actually warehouse agnostic. We've just they've just been built uh, uh, on Nikiza and D V two to, to um, and but they are data warehouse agnostic and yet uh, these are templates to help people design it. And it's not just we also have reporting templates um, and uh, we also have um, it's supposed to be about, we usually say it's about 80% of what any hospital might need, and that 20% will usually be specific to that organization. Uh, and so that requires a little bit of uh, process to, to create those new assets. So some subject areas might be specific, some subject areas might be specific to a hospital, and so we help the hospital uh, add those to it. But yes, it is customizable, for sure. But it, it accelerates okay, the whole process. Okay, good, good. Um, all right, here's the next next question is on performance. Can I speed up performance, my performance, by building a larger cache? You know, here's, it's, it's interesting that, um, that, that, that some people might have a system and um, they'll say, hey, you know, I'll just speed up my system by making a bigger cache or having faster drive. But what happens is you have a system that's already struggling um, and all you're doing is delaying that time that that system's going to struggle. And so what we do is, um, with with the Pure Data System for Analytics, is uh, we we select a system that is geared towards the performance, the data size, and the queries that you need. Right. So it's not just about data size. So data size is not the only problem that one one might have. And so sometimes increasing your your amount of memory or increasing your disk drive might not be the answer to the system that you currently have. And the thing is, with our system, um, if, for example, you need to double your data, you can double, it's linearly scalable, you just double the size of your platform. So you can bank on it, you can actually predict what you need to do to double your performance or double your uh, volume of data that you're analyzing using the pure data system for analytics. So it's not always a simple thing that you can you know, increase your disk drive. I mean, I, sometimes you might want to increase your disk drive and you realize the price that you're paying, um, you might as well go to the next level of ability, which would be a pure data system. Does that okay, one other question. Uh, yeah, well, one other question, Charlie, uh, and you've already gone over this. The question is proof of concept and the process, but what, explain to uh, the group what, give me an idea of the length of time of proof, proof of concept. I mean, give me, I, I know there's no typical, but give me an idea of, of what it takes to do that and time frame. General, talk to the time frame. Right. So, so the, the key thing is there's two ways you can do it. You can either do it using our, our uh, test labs here where you phone it, you dial into the test lab, that one. You, you connect to the test lab and load your data here uh, and do the analysis here. Or with what we have, if, if it makes sense, uh, you work together with our technical folks to determine what system would be the right system to do the analysis on, which is usually the production system. And um, and uh, 
what we'll do is uh, we'll right size the system. Uh, we'll uh, continue, we'll get it all ready to be shipped. Uh, it takes a while for it to ship. Just it might take a, um, a few weeks for for us to build that system, and get it released, so that we can bring it into your your uh, your premises. And then working with our technical person, set that thing, set the machine up, um, and then help you um, figure out what queries you want to do. We we usually come and, and figure out what are the use cases we're going to do at the beginning, so that we understand what uh, are the expected outcomes and what what is considered a success. And then we walk away, and you know we provide support, okay, whatever support you need. But uh, then you would go and use the machine like you would normally use them. And like I said, we had someone who, in the, and it can take a few weeks, uh, and uh, we had someone who within those few weeks was already able to um, make their money back. And, and we do it when it's right. right? We, we go in when we know it's right, and we give you the right machine. And usually when we're up, for example, when we're up against Oracle, it's like 85 to 90% of the time our machine just stays. And that's because people, when they realize it and get it into their premises, they realize what it can do, and um, and then at the end of that, what we do is we do a, a, a report where we say, you know, this is these were the use cases, these were the the, the, the outcomes, um, these were the analysis that were done, this data size, you know, explaining everything, so that you can then take that to your boss and justify why uh, you love this machine so much. Does that give a good overview of that? And in terms of one thing that people always ask me, and and I'm not so sure the numbers, but what's the involvement level of the people within the organization who's, who's doing this test? And I think it would be roughly the same number of people that you would normally be using this machine. So uh, probably a technical person, an analyst, a uh, coder, uh, things like that. But I don't know those numbers so well, and yeah, it might differ based on the use case. Um, but we do this a lot, um, and uh, we, we make sure that it's the right thing to do and to bring it in, and we're up within a day or two, and you're you're doing your analysis with your data in your premises with your uh, your code, um, no no smoke and mirrors. It's all right there in front of you. Okay, I think that that that's great. I can't thank you enough. Um, Pete, we have a few uh, more questions. Pete, we have a few yeah. more questions that have come in. Oh, okay. All okay. right. All right. So the. First question is: Is pure data a rebranding of Nishisa? <laughs> um, no. So big data is not a rebranding of Nishisa. Um, uh, I was showing. I don't know if I can get the control back, but um, I was showing to. our big data platform. Um, let's see if I can find it here, and then I'll get it up to you. Um, get the screen for you guys here. Yeah. I'm going to go back to the, the pure data, um, the, the big big data platform. Let me find that. Excuse me for a moment. But well, what let we me clarify. So, is, is, is pure data a rebranding of Matiza? I OK. Yeah, OK. I think it's big data. OK. So yes, pure data systems analytics is the next version of Matiza. Uh, Matiza as a separate name, it's really it's going to be the technology is still all there, um, but the thing is, is that we're now part of a greater um, product line, and it's connecting us all together. So the pure, we have the pure data system, right? Transactions and operational analytics, and analytics. but then we also have um, our pure systems and our pure flex, right? Pure systems for applications and our pure flex. So it's uh, what it is, we're now part of a, of a product line. And so the best thing to do was to have it all make sense from a branding perspective. Uh, but this new version of Pure Data Assistive Analytics is the next version of Nikiza. And so there is a slight speed increase. Uh, and there's better features, you know, more features uh, in this version than there was in the previous version, uh, which everybody knows about. But you also asked me about the big data. I think you meant Pure Data in the beginning. but um, just to reiterate that Nichiza is part of a pure data platform, uh, big data platform. Now, that Nichiza, um, the pure data system or analytics, is part of our um, big data platform that includes so many other components that they all work together. So, the pure data system analytics is ready to connect to things like our stream computing and our Hadoop systems. 
um, our accelerators, our visualization tools, our analytics tools, our, our data governance tools. Um, so it's all part of a, so it's in two places, right? It's the secure systems uh, category of expert integrated systems, and then also part of a big data platform for managing large volumes, varieties, and velocities of data. So this question actually leads right into it, which is, will Natiza integrate with PAX? With PAX? Um, if it has, if they're open, um, the thing is that PAX systems are, right, they're the image systems, and um, images are not structured and dealt for dealing with something like Natiza, like it just is for analytics. So you would actually, the metadata from all that, the, pad, the metadata in the PAX system, could reside on Natiza so that you can do your analytics. So for example, um, if you have a huge amount of uh, metadata based on that, so uh, uh, feature extraction that you've done on the images or uh, annotations, and if it's a significant amount of data, um, yes, then that part would be residing on, on the pure data uh, system, and then that would call out to the images wherever the images are stored. So I can see a, a case where that could happen. It just really depends on what kind of analytics you're going to be doing, what kind of um, uh, data sizes. But one could see also that that information from the PAC system resides on the pure data system as part of other data that might be there. So that would allow you to bring together EMR data and PAC system data, operational data and PAC system data, to understand that data in different ways that you couldn't do with just the PAC system that has an analytics on it. Does, does that make sense? Okay, I think this is the last question, which is uh, how do you manage the confidentiality agreement aspects uh, when handling medical info? Um, for for the proof of concept or for when it's deployed into an organization? Uh, because um, when, when, um, when it's deployed and you're using it in your organization, um, one could encrypt everything um, or one what one there's different ways to tackle it right one is you don't load anything that isn't you know, any uh, private information um, um, when you wouldn't deploy you know one there's different ways that you would deal with it one of the ways would be um, you wouldn't load information onto the system that was um, private right or and that would allow you to analyze the data uh, anonymously and get the raw data out of that way. So you're not you're not connecting that way. Another way would be to actually uh, encrypt everything that goes into the box. But that would be such a terrible uh, hit on performance. What we have, so I was talking about the Brigham Women's Hospital. Uh, they're using data um, that is that might be um, uh, private. And what they're doing, they're using institutional level privacy control. So their data center is secure. And that allows them not to worry about the individual drives and individual data points. And, and in terms of access of the information, uh, there's two levels of, of access control that, that might be relevant here. One is you can have access control just like usual uh, onto the database so that only people who are allowed to look at the data can. And then the second thing is um, that you would uh, uh, be able to um, control uh, what parts of the database people can query. And uh, the, the machine is set up for multi-tenant use so that you can have multiple databases on there that people don't even know are on there. And so you can have these queries going on concurrently to different databases uh, and therefore keep that data separate. So there are tools that allow you to separate that data so that um, that data is not visible to other people. I hope that explains. But, but uh, um, IBM also has some tools for you to manage that data uh, so that you can control what's being seen and what's being used. But the, the box itself already comes with some, some level of that control. And we, we've, we have this in multiple hospitals. We have this in um, multiple areas, and we have, uh, we have not seen that to be a problem. All right. Okay. Okay. Great. I think that that's all the questions that we have. Uh, Charlie or Pete, do you have any other words? 
No, I, I want to thank everybody for participating and taking time out of their busy schedule today to join us. And uh, if there's additional information and or questions you have, Nicole, uh, your, uh, uh, your information is on the screen. So Nicole's heading up our efforts, and she'd be delighted uh, to answer questions you might have uh, on uh, following on or be interested in, in uh, a demo. So or if you'd like the presentation, email, or if you have like the presentation, I can uh, email it to anyone if you want to request it. Just uh, send yep. me an email. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye bye.